In this video, we're gonna talk about how you can lose weight while eating carbs, the myths surrounding them, and why you really do not need to worry about carbs too much when it comes to losing weight. <laughs> so we are Dan and Mike from Dan Biceps and, Mike. and Banter. <laughs> We do videos all about nutrition, videos. training, fitness. So if you like that, consider that subscribe button, hang around, you might like some of the videos we do. Point number one, so why has this myth about carbohydrates come around when it comes to weight loss? When people tend to go on a diet and drop carbs, they'll see quick weight loss. And the reason for that is that they've not only just dropped the carbs, but as a byproduct, they've dropped the calories. So it's the reduction of calories that's caused the weight loss, but people don't, see that they see that oh i dropped carbs and i lost weight so yeah potentially then carbs are bad when you reduce carbs you will also reduce glycogen which is the carbohydrate stores that are kept within the muscle so if you're not eating them you will reduce them and then alongside that you'll drop in, you'll drop in water so you'll see a big scale weight drop and it's very very encouraging to be like wow i dropped carbs and i saw this amazing weight loss but then when you eat carbs you'll refill some of those stores alongside that water yeah. and actually the body fat loss would be exactly the same if you just kept the calories the same regardless of whether you ate carbs or you didn't eat carbs. Let's go on point two. Point number two. Foods are labelled either good or bad because of like high GI carbs, low GI carbs and often when people say they drop carbs, more often than not they drop really high calorie foods from their diet the majority of the time. So things like brownies for example, people think oh I've cut out carbs, I've cut out sugar so it's good for me. No, you just cut out loads of calories. Mm -hmm. It's the same with things like bread products, again pizza, cake, it's not just carbohydrates mm -hmm. in that. But regarding like the high GI, low GI as well, people talk about sugar being really really bad because it's high GI. But the GI of the carbohydrate you consume makes absolutely no difference to fat loss. If the carb amount is the same in total, it won't change fat loss in the slightest. So the GI only makes a difference when consumed in isolation. So if you're eating it as a mixed meal, so if you're inclusive of protein and fats, it's going to change the GI of that food anyway because it's going to slow down the digestion rate of that food. So it doesn't matter. Loads of people will have heard that brown rice is better than white rice or brown pasta is better than white pasta or brown bread is better than white bread. And you'll see people go, oh, I'm gonna have a sandwich, what bread? Oh, I'll have brown bread because I'm being healthy. There's no fucking difference, like no fucking difference. It might be slightly higher in fiber, be marginal so it really doesn't make any difference if you prefer white go with white it doesn't matter if it tastes slightly better and you're more adherent to that rather than just eating shit brown pasta brown rice like i used to fucking do there's no magic foods there's no magic carbohydrates yeah four calories per gram in them that's what you need to worry about not whether it's white brown yellow green blue it doesn't it doesn't make anything. sense bad carbs what does bad carbs mean good carbs bad carbs all gets broken down into to the same fucking thing glucose or fructose it makes no fucking difference so there's no such thing as good or bad carbs let's get point number three three point three three that one in it three carbohydrates timing either you can't have them after six or you've got to have them all around your workout yeah. or some specific Only magic time or... yeah where your body does something completely different because of the clock like you know your body doesn't know what fucking time it is does it like it doesn't know whether it's five minutes past six or five minutes to six so the six o'clock rule it's pretty much explained as simply as fucking that. And the whole thing with, uh, like we just said about carbs being stored in your body, just because you eat them after six doesn't mean that because you haven't burnt them off, they're going to be stored as fat. Your body will store them in muscle tissue in your body for a use at a later date. Yeah, that's the argument, isn't it? That it's like, oh, you shouldn't have them before bed because it's just going to lay on you heavy and you're going to sleep, so you're going to store them as fat. Because if you've eaten the same amount during the day, that means by default you've eaten less before six. So that means you were burning more fat before six. Yeah. So that's fine. Over the 24 hours, it will average out. No need to worry about it. So if it. you prefer having a bigger evening meal, inclusive of carbs, because you're with the family and it's better for your adherence, fucking crack on. The most important thing is that your daily numbers are on point, your daily calories are on point, and you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Easy. Point number four. Good luck getting them in. That's painful, that's that four. Hurt, I think. Three to four is a big jump, I it think. Is, I think that's the biggest jump you can get. I reckon so. Definitely. I reckon one to two is no difference. No, not Even really. though it's double, even though it's 50% more, one to two is no difference. Three to four is only 33% extra. I think but it's still- It's because you're fully stretched, aren't you? You're fully, yeah, it. you're fully dilated. Anyway, point four. Point sugar four. is not addictive. No. Despite what you may have heard in the media. So people aren't really addicted to sugar as in the substance. People aren't snorting sugar off the side of kitchen tables. You know, they're eating high calorie, high sugar foods that are very palatable, easy to eat, and they taste fucking amazing. Yeah. 
that's what people are addicted to when they say addicted, mm. but all that means is you want some of that food, and that's just inherent within us as, as humans to survive. We need more calories because then we're going to live for longer. The more body fat we have, the more food we have stored, right? Like a lot of people say it's fattening. Like sugar's not fattening. Again, like we said earlier on the point, it's just going to be broken down into glucose. It's just an easier, more readily available form of carbohydrate. And that's all it is. It's just already almost broken down, isn't it? Yeah. And, and the other thing is, sure, if your diet is high in sugar, it's probably going to be low in fiber, yeah. right? So there are elements to it where we kind of go, yeah, you don't want to overconsume sugar as part of your daily diet because it makes dieting and weight loss harder. But it's not to say yeah, that yeah. it makes it impossible. It that's, that's a straw man argument, isn't it? It's like, oh, you said I can eat all sugar. It's like, well, Technically, you can, Technically, yeah. but it's going to be very, but very hard. It's very, very hard, and it's probably not the healthiest for you because you need a level of micronutrients and fibre within your diet, which you're not going to get if you're just eating 100% sugar. But Ooh. technically, you could still lose weight. Beautiful. Done. If you enjoyed that video, don't forget to share it with a mate. Share it with someone who needs to watch this sort of stuff so they get this kind of information. Sad. Don't forget to hit subscribe as well. We'll see you next time.